In this last example, we're looking for a cube root of negative z to the 12th, y to the 6th. So this is an odd index, so right away I know I don't have to worry about absolute value bars. So let's look first at this w to the 6th, because I don't have to worry about a negative sign with that, so that's simpler. Well, if I'm looking for the cube root, I need something, w to the something to the third power that equals w to the 6th. And since 2 times 3 is 6, I know that the cube root of w to the 6th is w squared. Okay, so that handles that. Now looking at z to the 12th, I need z to the something when raised to the third power. It's going to give me z to the 12th. Well, 4 times 3 is 12. This is 4 times 3, z to the 4 times 3 equals z to the 12th. Now, um, there's a negative in front of that, but I can just think of that as negative 1. And I know that negative 1 cubed is negative 1 times negative 1, that's 1, times negative 1 is negative 1. So the cube root of negative 1, the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. So I can look at this just separately. This is the cube root of negative 1 times z to the 12th times w to the 6th. And I found each cube root right in here. I could even rewrite it that way to make it clear what's happening. This would be negative 1 cubed times z to the 4th cubed times y squared cubed. So when I take the cube root of each of these, you just essentially cancel these. And I'm going to end up with negative 1 times z to the 4th times w squared, or just negative z to the 4th w squared. Again, odd index. I don't need to worry about absolute value bars. So the easiest way is just to you know, approach each section individually, look for the cube root, and then combine that all in your final answer. That concludes this les lesson on nth roots. Thanks for visiting educator.com.